and I love this band rather nice. Welcome, you guys. Bro, we love you, dude. No. <laughs> we love you more. <laughs> we love you a lot. Thank you Impossible. so much. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you guys being here. This is a great first band to have. I was listening to you guys all day, and it was like, just such good energy to get through my work day, and I love awesome. it. Awesome. <laughs> dude, thank you. No, thank you. Um, Introduce yourselves. Who are you guys? I am Joe. I play the guitar. I am, uh, this is I am Oliver, <laughs> and I, I play drums. <laughs> That's great. And are there more um, of you? Is it just... Yeah, there's two more, but one is stuck at Chick-fil-A, and the other is... <laughs> Just not on the call. <laughs> I, th- I think being he's probably stuck- playing Minecraft. <laughs> I think being stuck at Chick Fil A is like the best problem you could have, <laughs> unless you work yeah, there or something. He's making so much money. Yeah, he's working right okay. now. That's yeah, why he's okay. not home. Um, wow! Thank you guys. Thank you for joining us on ninety-one point five FM WML Lowell, live from the Fallout Shelter. I love throwing that in. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yes, let's go. Um, where are you from? Where are you guys from? We are from Rhode Island. Rhode Island. That's exciting. How? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no. How did you guys hear about WML then? What's... Um, I happened to find it just on Instagram. So Instagram's been pretty helpful for us right now. Just like looking for okay. new bands to talk and stuff. Um, and I came across you guys and another radio station just trying to spread our reach out and uh you guys actually answered us like the fastest out of anyone which is pretty awesome <laughs> Heck yeah. so we're appreciative of that <laughs> yeah we um we it, it's great that our instagram is actually you know doing something because we we just kind of got it started uh i want to say last semester or whatever it might have been but like it's very new and um it's just i've been dying for interaction and you guys have been like really one of the first bands to jump on it so thrilled to have you and and just to chat with people that aren't myself (laughs) (laughs) that's always a good thing yeah so rather nice i I was saying it to to my my co-host here jack but even in conversation you guys were literally rather nice like just great to talk to you guys (laughs) have some good back and forth Mm -hmm. but where did the actual band name inspiration come from a year ago is when we basically started writing stuff and we had songs ready to play and record, but we didn't really have a name. Uh, we had we had like pretty rough demos. We figured we should reflect how our music sounded in the name of the band. So uh, we figured like most of the point of our band is like we're really DIY. We record all of our music on our own and we make our own merch and stuff. So uh, the idea is that without having a record label, stuff isn't going to be perfect. So... I went on a search for synonyms for less than perfect or like decent. <laughs> and uh, a lot of them were taken like, okay, and kind of all right. They're a band from Philly. So rather nice was just stumbled upon and we all agreed on it. Yeah. Because then- we had some pretty rough names before. I mean, <laughs> oh, I don't man. know. Like, I- I'm going to say one. It was pretty bad. Um, For the longest time, we were so embarrassed to even say our like people would say, like that was great. Uh, what's your guys' name so we can check you out? And we'd be embarrassed because it was Turtle Snake. <laughs> so like, it, we 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 like had to change it. It just wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, that's kind of fun. Turtle Snake. It's like <laughs> it's, it's different. For it's sure. garbage, man. Don't it's even what try we thought. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think it's fun, but um, been worse. I think I, I, yeah, there's definitely been worse. <laughs> But I think it's good that you found something that you feel really portrays you. And, and I love to hear that you guys are all DIY because I think that's just like, it's so attainable. Like, it's so possible. And it's a good, like, I don't know, precedent. Like, it's like, hey, guys, like, we're a band and we're doing it ourselves. Like, you can totally do it, too. You know what I mean? That's what we tell people. It's it's not too difficult to get into music to start. Mm-hmm. You don't need a huge production team. You don't need a label. You don't need really anything you need an instrument you can play and a platform to show off Absolutely. what you can do. And some good hustle for sure. But <laughs> I mean, you guys even reaching out to these Instagram pages, it's like, that's hustle in itself, you know, just trying to, like you said, spread the word and um, get your name out there. And it's, it's awesome that, you know, we're in Massachusetts right now, but we're connecting to you guys. You're probably in Rhode Island right now, which is just, yeah. like, it's so cool. Like, <laughs> you know, to think about, 
Um, I've been a host on the show, you know, a couple of years now. A lot of the bands are, you know, relatively local or they come from a local place, whereas this is just like we're reaching out and, and kind of maybe moving across the country almost. Maybe. <laughs> if we're lucky enough. I was curious. Do you guys have different vocalists? Um, yeah. So I, Joe, I sing mainly, but we have um, a guitarist who can sing. His name is Mike. On our song Pretty Cool, he sang that. And on a couple upcoming songs soon, he's going to be singing lead vocals as well. Yeah, he, he wrote all of Pretty Cool, so it just seemed fitting that he would sing it too. And it added a cool dynamic that we all enjoyed. And a lot of people really like Pretty Cool and his singing on it and everything. So it just kind of fit. Because he was the first other member other than Joe to actually sing on a track. Like there was, I was going to say there was a little backing stuff we'd done, but we never really did that until Mike came along. So yeah, Mike was the first ever person other than Joe to sing. That's that's great. I love that in a band when like you can kind of get some variety in your sound that way you know like sure different songs can have different feels but it's like even just throwing a different singer on it can make a whole new world of possibilities and um you know i, I love that like i said another question for you what is some of your musical inspiration i always love this question it's tough but so oliver listens to a lot of different stuff than i do but I yeah. listen to a lot of indie bands like um, Boy Pablo and Hippocampus. I have been obsessed with them for like years, and they really helped to flesh out our main sound and inspiration. I listen to a lot of people like um, uh, Primus, Gorillas, a lot of funky or heavier stuff than uh, an indie band. <laughs> I was gonna say those are those are definitely very different spectrums, and that's huge too. You know, having some variety. And what you listen to gives your band itself some variety. So that's awesome. I was gonna say that's probably it's it's good to have different tastes and we, we we all don't have the same like oh we all like A, B, and C. We actually have different stuff to bring to the table because of our inspirations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. So how how long have you guys been a band? We started back in twenty eighteen as just like doing covers for um, a school concert but we recorded our first song at the end of 2019 and most of our time as a band was 2020 which was uh not great timing so we didn't get to play like any shows or whatever but in 2020 we met mike so that was big for us because he helped us record a lot of um everything past our first ep actually so that was that was pretty great for us that's cool it's it definitely I mean, that was going to be one of my questions was how was your transition through kind of the pandemic as a band? But um, even myself, I've realized that there's a lot that still like could be had. And there's a lot of um, basically there was a lot of like opportunity in itself that the pandemic kind of brought in a weird way. Like it's like, yeah, sure. Like you can't really get out as a band, which is really tough. But like you also have the possibility to, um, you know, meet new people like you did and as a DIY band, it's huge because you have more time to like record at home and, and kind of be creative in your own space. So seeing the silver lining and, and all of this nonsense that's been going on has um, been great for me personally, and it sounds like it's been great for you as well. It's been pretty good. It's uh, We've gotten a lot. We've actually gotten a lot of work done. We've, we've really improved on like how we interact with, with fans and everything over this because – uh, we're like they're dealing with the same stuff we are and we are dealing with the same as them so it's a good way to actually bond over something and we do a lot of interactive stuff with with the people that follow us and stuff so like if we're not really doing anything we'll uh, post something where it's like give us chords and like stuff like that and we'll write a song about it and because of the pandemic uh, interacted with a with a lot of um a lot of our fans that's awesome I, I love that idea of just being like, hey, like, you know, shoot us some random challenge or like whatever it might be. And um, that can bring you guys a bit closer to kind of working together to to make that work in itself. You know, that's rather nice. Sorry, I, I don't want to. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't, don't want to keep doing that. <laughs> One thing I really love about you guys was 
you have a lot of like solo guitar melody lines and you just get like a really great tone out of it it's like very unique and like i can tell that's like a very signature thing for you guys there's not really any question involved with it but i just love that and it felt like it was like taking a place of a synth because like i don't know like your your band definitely caters to a synth but it's like you're like nah we're throwing guitar instead like i don't know just something i love Thank yeah that's you. a really um hippocampus thing they whenever like they usually support a melody they write with a guitar line as the same thing so like diversions the intro guitar is the same as the chorus but the melody is just so different i don't know it's a unique melody so i feel like it it made a cool guitar riff and a cool vocal melody so we figured why not have both yeah yeah no that's great and it adds like that melody it like makes you want to like sing along with it and it's it's very like almost catchy in a way thank you yeah i would like i said i was listening to you guys all day and I actually kind of wanted to play a couple songs and then maybe you could I'll play a song. Maybe you could talk about it, play another song. You could talk about it if you don't mind. Yeah, that oh, sounds good. Really cool. Amazing. Um, they all have stories. I mean, some of the stories are way lamer compared to the others. <laughs> but and I mean, they all have their weird, funny story. I mean, a lot of them are usually ironically written where like the lyrics are pretty dumb, but it means something to us. So. That's how we usually like to write lyrics because none of us are really talented at lyric writing and they're usually like very literal and there's not much nuance to them, but we we try to make nuance in our own dumb way. <laughs> I like that. And I don't think like I don't think you should um, feel that you're bad at writing lyrics just because there's no nuance. Like I feel like in itself writing lyrics is its own creative thing and like it's a form of expression so if you're really getting to the point of you know how you feel and and you're engaging the listener and giving them a story to relate to that's like you know 90 percent of the battle to me i think so i'm i'm gonna jump into this first song that i think this one was one of my favorites that i heard from you guys um i thought it was a really cool vibe in itself and um the sound was awesome and that might be because it's like an acoustic version um but oh, sweet. yeah zoinked was just like <laughs> like such a awesome song i was like like it was one of those songs where you like you hear it and you just like immediately like oh like, what is this you know what i mean like i mean a lot of your songs were like great and i, I loved listening to it but this one like just really smacked me in the face like I don't I don't know what it was. But. <laughs> that's awesome. It, that's that's one of our favorite songs to play live, and it's uh, it's unbelievably fun. It's got so much energy and so much, just like, like you could jump around do it and stuff. It's 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 such a fun song to play. I love hearing that. Let's uh let's listen to it and then maybe we can dive in a little more on it. Ah, oh, love it. It's a jam. It's an absolute vibe. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, I don't know, tell tell us. Well, first of all, there was an open mic we were playing in uh, late last year. And we had made this instr instrumental and we loved it. And we knew we wanted to play the song live, but we didn't just want it to be an instrumental. So the, the lyrics were actually kind of rushed. And I was thinking of a topic I could talk about that I was feeling frustration from. Because that's, I don't know, from like the minor sense of the song, it's like just the key itself is like kind of angsty and it, it has this like nice flowy vibe but to me uh the only logical thing to talk about would be something i was frustrated with so conveniently this song was written during my first semester in college and college virtually in your first semester is not kind and it was very tough so speaking back to um straightforward lyrics i mean i literally talk about assignments being due on wednesday and i always put them off and it was hard keeping up with the work so that song is quite literally just about my experience as um a college freshman in a virtual realm and i feel like it turned out pretty good considering the lyrics were written in like a day just before we played the song live so none of the bandmates even knew the lyrics but we <laughs> knew the song structure so uh yeah we didn't even practice the song with the lyrics like I had written the lyrics after the practice day and it was finished right before that open mic was done so 
the lyrics were conveniently finished in time and it was it's a simple song but we all like it a lot for sure i think joe sent me the lyrics after he sent or after he did it like got them all through and i was like it actually it goes nice with everything and then and then we played in I, I think it sounds pretty good i like it yeah it it all kind of very much coincides like especially the part where it's just like the bass like it's just bass playing you know and you have that little um singing lick where you kind of sing along with it like everything really ties in together and that's awesome and um i wanted to say too that sense of like you know just writing the lyrics and kind of just going with it like i think that's huge because a lot of people that write lyrics will get in their head about it you know what i mean like like they'll overthink it and they'll say, "Oh, I I can't say the word zoinked or something," you know. And it's like, well, that's the like... <laughs> well, actually, zoinked was um, Nick recommended it as just the song title, and just from that one word, it kind of fleshed out the whole song. So I, I was talking about you know my experience of college being difficult, but um, there's this stigma about big musicians and they always turn to drugs and alcohol to cope with stress and the point of the chorus is saying i don't want to fall into that stereotype and end up like other musicians so that that's kind of i said at least i'm not going to pass the time because a lot of people smoke just to get through the day and i don't want to end up like that (laughs) so it's it's not like this big deeply meaningful thing but it's just me commenting on people's negative views of the music industry which i think is unfair because uh, the music industry is what got me through the first semester of college. Music got me through it. And I'm going to school for music, so my whole life is already music. But writing that song and participating in this band is uh, what I look forward to most of the time. It's it's like my hobby outside of music school. <laughs> yeah. Basically, the song means we don't want to fall into the 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 pit that other musicians end up going down with. Yeah, and that like that's huge in itself like you feel like like you even said it like you feel like the lyrics just were kind of you know how you're feeling and stuff like that but that's so relatable to so many people like especially in a sense where you said you know you don't want that to be the portrayal on the music industry because there's a lot of people like that who you know don't resort to to drugs and alcohol and and coping methods and you know a lot of the times music is their coping method like it's very telling of you know who you are in a sense but also can be totally relatable to to anyone who's listening um and even with the lyrics just being written in a day it's like that means nothing to to how deep they can be you know what i mean thank you yeah um i wanted to talk about real quick so your latest album um which looks like your first album like first full length Um, album yeah, yes. it's the it's the technically the debut, but it contains our EPs from the year. Cool, I like that a lot. Um, I love too. Like the the album art is like, it almost feels like all over the place. I guess that makes sense though. Like looking at it now, because you have winter vibes, uh, simp cycle, and then is quadratic another one of your EPs? Yeah, quadratic yeah. is actually the first EP that we we put out. That's awesome. I actually, I, I really love that and didn't even realize it till now that I'm like staring at it in the face. And then you have all this like rather nice just written. Is that supposed to like shape something? Rhode Island? Yeah, I do the um, I do all the art for for the band. And um, so I was trying to think of a creative way to implement our name without just like a big the rather nice. So I was like, let me let me. I drew out the outline of Rhode Island and I was like, what if I fill it in with our name? And that's, that's how the process went. So yeah, it's Rhode Island written out as rather nice. I, I love that. And like, like I said, I really didn't even catch on. Like it's such a, such a subtle thing. Like the art is just like cool in itself, how it's very eclectic. But um, once you dig deeper, there's a lot of depth. And um, again, another thing that's very telling of you guys and your creativity and, I don't know, keep it rocking because that's that's incredible. Uh, thank you so much, man. So it's the album's called Rather Nice Volume 1. Is there, is there a plan for Volume 2? Well, yeah, so Volume 2 would come out at the end of this year. So basically, we want to release a few EPs every year, but the idea is that by the end of the year, we have an album length of songs 
the idea is that the EPs come out about three times a year so that we can release stuff regularly. But, you know, by the end of the year, we have enough songs to make a separate album. And then with that album, we add on extras like an acoustic version of one of the songs or one of the songs, but played in a different way or just a new song because we, we tacked on Zoinked at the end of this album, even though the regular version is coming out this year later on. Mm. I love that. Like EPs are a really great way to like combat the simplicity of singles, you know, cause like singles are singles can be great, but I feel like EPs are just a whole nother world of just being like, Hey, here's like, a few of our thoughts rather than just being like, here's one idea, live with it for, you know, a month. And then here's another idea. It's like, um, we figured that, you know, you could either do 12 singles a year, once a month, or you could do a few EPs a few times a year. And we figured not only would the EP, uh, have a little bit more significance and like, we can hype it up a little bit more, but a single every month would get redundant, I guess, in a way like the, the EP is, more of like a full-fledged thought Mm -hmm. as opposed to one song like each ep kind of has a theme you know like simp cycle was about like teenage relationships and winter vibes is just literally (laughs) like what we thought winter sounded like um in a pretty simple way so uh yeah all of them have their own ideas and then once they come together at as the album at the end it shows all the work we did that year Mm -hmm. even though like it shows a a pretty big variety too because the eps aren't connected in any way but they all have a lot of different sounds in them so some person that we were talking to from a podcast earlier uh she mentioned that even though we only have one album we already have songs that cater to like any mood you would Mm -hmm. want to play so we have like upbeat songs and these relaxed songs and love songs and everything and it's just one album at the end. So that that's what we're going after. We want to have a lot of different sounds, but not all scrunched together during the year. So like, it's like the season kind of affects the sound of it. Like summer is going to be our more upbeat, energetic songs. And then winter is usually the dulled down, more mellow, more mellow sounds. And, and that's, that's great too. I, I love that, you know, thinking about it, it's like, an EP can really help you kind of shape the other songs as well. Whereas if you just drop singles, it's like, okay, that's going to be one shape and that's kind of it. Like it can kind of mold. And you're even saying too, you do kind of different versions of the song and put them on the album. I think that's another great way to like have a familiar vibe with your fans, but also like give some fresh content on an album and not totally just kind of like, you know, have that redundancy of just being like, hey, all our EP songs are now just shoveled onto our album. It's like you get some, like I said, variety and with with that familiarity at the same time. Play one more. Why not? Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you. Now don't make me say it again. <laughs> We're all blushing. We're, even me, I'm blushing. Um, <laughs> this This next song we talked about a little bit. Um, already but this was another one of those songs that like I think I listened to this twice because I was like ooh yeah like you know really vibing with it this one here is called Pretty Cool I guess that we mentioned it earlier is this the only song you have with a different singer or one Um, so far technically yeah Yeah. but we have we have more coming this year cool okay Um, so Pretty Cool let's listen to that Pretty Cool by Rather Nice those are (laughs) I like that uh, keep it locked. Totally not planned. <laughs> <laughs> what I what I really love is that it feels like this like whole back and forth to try to like work this sort of relationship or whatever it might be out, and it's like just so much like call and response and like back and forth. Like you can tell there's like so much progression in this you know two almost three minute song. Cause yeah, cause Mike has a has a story about this one where it's um. It's basically um, pretty cool. It's a pretty satirical poking fun at drama shows like on Netflix where they they view relationships as childish normally. But we show like in a sarcastic way that um, that's not really how it is, at least in our relationship. Like technically we're still teenagers, like even though most of us are 18, we sympathize with, you know, teenage relationships because we were in them. 
And from our experience, TV shows enjoy portraying them as childish or not really real relationships. So we thought it'd be funny to poke fun at it. Like the the bridge of that song is literally, um, we're all fish in a big sea, but you swam close to me. Like we want to make it cliche and lame, like how uh, Netflix and like Hallmark like to make it look like. Mm -hmm. But like at the same point, like it's almost very endearing, like at that you know at that level like you you feel like you get the best of both worlds in a sense where like you can tell like it's very satirical but it's also like oh like it is like a nice love song like you know about this relationship that doesn't totally seem to be working you know yeah it, it, it's it's cute in a way i guess yeah. like it, it comes off it definitely does come off in a lighthearted way and even though we wrote it ironically um, I do kind of like how the story came out because, yeah, it definitely is like a romanticized portrayal of love. The lyrics don't change very much, but they change meaning Yeah, in the second half. Like the verses barely change lyrically, but they definitely carry the weight of what um, we're trying to say in a simple way. For sure. And that's that's what I like about the dynamic. Yeah. Like having a different feel almost. Exactly. and And like I said, too, like it's it's totally relatable. Like this is just a song that you can listen to and, and sympathize with, you know? And I think a lot of your songs are like that. And I think that's kind of a product of how raw and like straightforward and to the point you are with the lyrics. Um, Thank you, man. Yeah. This is a random question. Like we were saying, you have some songs that you transfer over from EPs and, and put on your albums. Do you, usually re-record those songs or just kind of take what you had and, and um, bring them over? Um, the the exact wave file is just plopped in, but that's what we like doing with um, the revamped versions mm -hmm. or the different sonic versions. Like, I feel like we're a pretty good acoustic band and our songs are usually written so simply that acoustic always works no matter what. So it's always just you know, basic guitar chords and guitar lines and the bass lines are pretty much the same out of all the versions. So we can change like the feel of the song, but pretty much play it the same way we would have played it on the studio version. Mm. And that's what's good about it. So we usually try to get a couple acoustic versions or switch up the feel for the album, but we just plop in the same files as before. So it's more of like, if you were going to listen to a playlist of our songs, except we added a couple extras at the end. Yeah. Like pretty cool has an acoustic version that I really enjoy. And I feel like the acoustic version actually brings out more of that cutesy romanticness mm -hmm. than the electric version does. But I think they both do a good job at um, showing off what we already spoke about. For sure. And you guys said you're in school. I didn't really touch upon this, but where, where do you go? Um, we all met at the same high school, except for Mike. We're all percussionists in our own school bands, and that's actually how we met Mike. So Nick, Oliver, and I came from the same percussion section at Johnson High, and um, Mike comes from Mount St. Charles. Actually, the fact that we're all percussionists is a pretty big part of the band because um, we met Mike through a percussion festival at, it was at a college, but um, it was a state percussion festival. And that's how we met him, which was pretty sweet. Because we wanted to see if all percussionists had the, um, had the same humor. <laughs> so we were like, so they sat a row behind, well, he, he literally sat a row behind me and Joe and we turned around, looked at him. We said some, some vine reference. It was probably like 21 or something. And we turned around and said it to him and he laughed and he played along with the joke. And then that's, we literally met over like a joke. That's awesome. I love and then that. I found out he liked Boy Pablo and that kind of solidified it. <laughs> Boy Pablo is great. And I was thinking, like, I definitely hear, you know, the hippocampus Boy Pablo, uh, you know, inspiration. But at the same time, like, like you're saying Primus with like this very like rhythmic and even with you guys being in, in drum I guess drum core would you call it, uh, or is it just? Yeah, it's it's pretty much that. We played. Um, we're all in a marching band too, so it's pretty okay. similar to a drum core. Yeah, and and you can just like tell, you know, you're you're all very together, so to say, um, and that's huge. You know, you can 
with the influence of being in a, in a big band like that, it's um that's something that's very practiced. Yeah, definitely. Just want to see if I had any more questions. Jack, do you have any questions for him? Um, yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, uh, what's your songwriting process like? Quickly, mm, uh, I was wondering question. how you. I know we got into that a little bit, but like generally, like for your songs in general, what's your coming up with ideas? And like... So, the first EP I wrote a lot of, but um, after Mike joined the band uh, at practices, we wrote a lot just jamming and stuff. So um, like Zoinked, for example, that kind of just all fell together at a practice just out of nowhere. And then we just never let go of it because we liked it a lot. But it used to be, I literally wrote like baseline, guitar, chords, everything for Quadratic, the first EP. But after that, it was a lot more cooperative and we would write a lot during practice. So it's been tough writing songs now because we can't have band practice. But yeah, it's just mainly how i imagine normal i mean other bands write songs it's pretty straightforward but normally our song structures are exactly the same to the t so like a lot of our songs are the exact same length it makes it easier for us to uh figure out when we're going to change to a verse or a chorus or stuff so it makes the songwriting process easier and then we can change it afterwards if we need to that's what i was going to say it's cool it's cool that we kind of stick to the same type of um structure so if we do end up switching it up or we end up throwing in another uh section or something like that it, it really catches people's ears i like that i like that a lot and um cool. you know you you can just tell that you guys really work well together and you synergize and um that's huge in a band to be like that cohesive and you know even just in like a like a jam like you were saying or whatever like that's awesome to have some sort of structure to base upon and then like you guys you know clearly know each other well and and click and that's where kind of the creativity sprouts so that's awesome to see see that and and unfold i guess lastly why don't you guys plug yourself um we have links to spotify apple music and youtube on our website rather nice band.com we do have a recorded concert on our youtube that features a lot of songs and it also features zoinked in its real electric sound that's also like one of the first things you find on our website we have an ep coming out in april and um this is our first time like saying it so you're getting it first time on the air um it is a four minute long ep it's four songs each a minute long and it's it's called fast for (laughs) obvious reasons so yeah and also, my friend Carlos wanted to get a shout out, so I'm going to shout out Carlos. Um, he's yes. he's epic, and he is the coolest Mexican I know. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> he told me to say that, so I said we, it. We love you, Carlos. Hey, Carlos. We love Carlos. Thanks for listening. And we Carlos. also love my cousin. She's listening on air right now, and yeah, and my, she's awesome my too. My parents are listening at the moment too. All of his parents are okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all right, all right, all right. We love <laughs> listeners. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for bringing your, your your listeners along. Thank you guys for coming. This has been great to just chat and pick your brain a little bit. Thank you, man. This has been so fun. Yeah, yeah. So check Rather Nice out on all sort of streaming platforms. They have their website, Instagram, you name it. You got these guys. Um, oh, and one other thing. Um, we do have a merch site. Um, Oliver Ooh. designed every single um, design on there. Uh, we have hoodies and t-shirts, and we even have baseball caps. They look pretty sick. And stickers. Um, stickers, yeah. I so if that. you want to support us, we, we really hate the idea of getting donations since we are like a very <laughs> irrelevant band. So please don't <laughs> donate to us. But if you wanted to support us in any way, we get like three bucks per shirt. So that would be really appreciated there's a tab on our website for merch if you want to check out those designs my favorite design is the 1969 collection that's pretty cool um and oliver's just a genius with art so everything he does looks pretty cool yeah i'll I'll ask oliver do you do like the album art and stuff like that because i do yeah what i what i do is using my process for doing the art for everything is for merch i'll just i'll sit down and i'll think like what would I want to wear on a shirt? What would another random person want to wear on a shirt? But for the 
the EPs, it's a little more difficult. I, I sit down, I listen to the the tracks we have and I get a feel for like, for like what that kind of like emotion I get from that. And then that kind of works with how the art goes. So it's, it's some process that I don't really know how to explain, but it just kind of all falls out. No, that's good. It definitely needs to be kind of a, a very inter intrapersonal sort of experience. Um, yeah. And you have some great art on these EPs. I love like Simp Cycle, Diversions, like just so cool and very, uh, very unique, just like you guys. So, oh, thank you so much. Man. Yeah. Again, wow. I can't thank you guys enough for, for stopping by. Um, Maybe we'll have you again sometime down the road. Maybe when your EP comes out, we'll we'll talk about that. But oh, we'd love yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, please. But until then, um, yeah, thanks a billion for for hopping by for being such great pals. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. Thank you. You guys have take a great care. night. You too. Have a good night, guys.